Okay, let us discuss this problem. So, this is the two mass system. We have a horizontal surface frictionless mu is equal to zero. Let us say there are two masses. One mass is this attached by a spring. Mass of this is m1 and mass of this is m2. A spring constant is k, something like hydrogen molecule H2. So if you have H2 molecule, one hydrogen atom is attached to the another hydrogen atom, and there is a spring. So this attractive forces can be written as a spring. So this is a idealization of H2 molecule. So two masses M1 and M2 are connected by a massless spring of a spring constant k, as shown in the figure. The system is free to oscillate along the length of a spring. So this system is free to oscillate in this direction along the length of a. So this can go in this direction, come, go back and forth. Again here also the same thing. So that the system oscillates with a frequency. So frequency of this system is given by 1 by 2 pi under root k by mu. So this you have to prove. This means you have to find omega, where mu is. Also called reduced mass, and it is given as m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2. So mu is given by this expression m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2. Now how will find for this question? How will it solve? So let us say initially situation is something like this: a spring is initially not elongated. This is the initial situation. Now let us say my coordinate is. Let us fix this coordinate. This is zero zero. Now if I displace this masses, this displace and this also displace. So this let us say finally this block is here, and this block is here. So what is happening? Let us try to understand. This has moved by a distance x one. So mass m one I have moved mass m one by distance x one. And mass m2, that is basically I have moved by distance x2. So this is the initial. So this mass is basically moved by distance x2 from this point. Are you getting? So if you see what is the compression in the spring or elongation in the spring. So let us first find, and let us assume x2 is greater than x1. So I am assuming x2 is greater than x1. This means I am elongating more and compressing less. This means this spring is elongated. So what is the elongation in the spring? Everybody can answer. So elongation in the spring. And this is basically equals to x2 minus x1 because this distance is x2 that is more. So elongated more compressed less. So final elongation is x2 minus x1. So what will happen? This spring is elongated, so this will try to push pull this side, and this spring will try to pull this spring this side. Are you getting? So this is the pulling forces that is acting. So let us say force is acting on this is this direction, and the force on this is acting in this direction, and the force will be given as k times x, and x is nothing but x2 minus x1. So let us write force is given by x2 minus x1 into k. So this is the spring force. Have you write? Have you written this one or not? Let us write equation for particle one. So if I write equation for m1, what I am going to write is force is equal to mass into acceleration. Force is in this direction. That is k into x2 minus x1. Mass of this is m1, and acceleration will. So you see, the x coordinate of this is x1. So I can say acceleration is d2 x1 by d2 square. So this is my equation number one. If you write equation for m2, what you will write? You will write the force is acting in this direction. So let us say this direction is my positive direction. So force is acting in this direction. So this is minus k x2 minus x1 is equal to mass into acceleration. So mass is basically moved in this direction by distance x2. So if you see this coordinate from here, let us say this length is l. So this length coordinate of this is 
L plus X2. So you can find, so coordinate of this block will be L plus X2 and if you differentiate, L is a constant that will be 0, so simply dx2 by dt. Are you getting? So let me write again if you are not able to understand. So let us copy somewhere else in your copy. So coordinate, X coordinate of 2 can be written as L0, that is the initial natural length. So let us say the initial natural length is L0. L0 plus X2. Now if I differentiate 2 times, so dx2, d2x2 by dt square, this is same as d2x2 by dt square because L0 will be 0, differentiation. So this is simply acceleration is d2x2 divided dt square. So this is mass m2 into acceleration that is d2x2 by dt square. This is equation number 2. If you have not written the last one, you can copy. Okay, now let us go for this solving these two equations. So I have to solve these two equations. What I can do? So let us divide by masses m1 and m2 both sides and then subtract these two equations. So if I divide by m1, equation 1 can be further modified d2x1 divided by dt square. This is equals to k by m1 x2 minus x1. So this is the modified form of equation 1. Similarly you can modify equation number 2. So if you modify equation 2 you will have d2x2 by dt square. So this is minus k by m2 and this is again x2 minus x1. So this is my equation 2. Now I need x2 minus x1. So what I can do is I can subtract these equation. So 2 minus 1 if I do. So I will have d2x2 by dt square. And you can see your copy. Minus d2x1 by dt square. <coughs> This is equals to 2 minus 1 I am doing. So this is minus k by m2 minus k by m1. And x2 minus x1 is common. You can see yourself. x2 minus x1 is common. So I can write. Let us take. This is d2x2 minus d2x1. So I can. what I can do is. I can clap this together. So d2x2 minus x1 divided by dt square this is equals to minus and this is k 1 by m1 plus 1 by m2 and this is x2 minus x1 so now you see this is d2 x2 minus x1 by dt square this is equals to minus k this is m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 divided by 1 by m, uh, m1 m2 so this is you see 1 by mu I'm getting so this is m1 plus m2 let me write once again divided by m1 m2 x2 minus x1 so I will have d2 x2 minus x1 by dt square this is equals to minus k by mu x2 minus x1 so this if you plug x2 minus x1 is new variable z so you can say this is d2z divided by dt square is equals to minus k by mu and times z so this is the shm are you getting or not so this is the equation of shm where omega square is given by k by mu are you getting so time period will be 2 pi by omega so that is 2 pi under root k by mu are you getting or not so frequency is basically 1 by time period so the reverse of time period will be 1 by 2 pi under root mu by k are you getting so this system will have time period this basically mu is called reduced mass m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 so this mu is called reduced mass mu is called reduced mass Now two special cases we can have. 
वट विल हैपन इफ आई हैव एम वन इज गोज टू इन फाइनाइट सो लेट एस ट्राई टू सी दिस केस इफ एम वन गोज टू इन फाइनाइट सो वट इज म्यू सो म्यू इज गिवेन एज सो चेक यूर कॉपी म्यू इज गिवेन एज एम वन एम टू डिवाइड बाई एम वन प्लस एम टू सो लेट एस से एम वन प्लस एम वन एम टू डिवाइडेड बाई एम वन प्लस एम टू इफ वन गोज इन फाइनाइट सो दिस म्यू इज बेसिकली एम वन लेट एस एम वन गोज इन फाइनाइट सो वट वी आर डूइंग इज डिवाइडिंग बाई एम वन अप एंड डाउन सो वेल एव एम टू डिवाइडेड बाई वन प्लस एम टू बाई एम वन so if m1 goes to infinite in that case mu is simply equals to m2 so in that case frequency will be 2 pi mu by k and that i can do so let us say if i have system so how can i make m1 infinite so let us try to see one physical situation if i place this side a horizontal ball a vertical ball and put m2 is here k is here and now this can do shm now this time m1 is basically infinite because mass of the ball is infinite so in that case mu will be simply this mass mu is equal to m2 so time period is very simple in that case so time period will be 2 pi uh, omega will be basically k by mu so omega is k by mu and in this case k by m2 and that is everybody knows if you have a single mass attached to the spring this is the time period you can check your result Are you getting or not? So, if m1 goes to infinite, your system reduces to a single mass oscillating. Are you getting? We'll discuss the next problem. This is a quite easy problem. You have to remember the method. What is the important method in this case? We have. This is the one important point in this question. We have writing two equations. So, once you have written these two equation, here I have one important point. to solve this equation what i am doing is i am taking this m1 this side i am dividing by m1 and dividing by m2 and then then i am subtracting these two equations this is very important so you have to divide by m1 and you have to divide by m2 so this equation i have divided by m1 you check your copy and i have divided by m then i have subtracted and then i will get one the x2 minus x1 so x2 minus x1 i have to free x2 from m2 i have to i have to free x1 by m1 and that's why i'm dividing by m1 and m2 so let us finish here we'll discuss the next problem i think all of you are getting this one